to introduce Dr. Solange Peters, um, who will present her study, The Association Between KRAS, STK11, and Keep one Mutations and Outcomes in Poseidon, Dravimab plus Tremilumumab plus Chemotherapy and Metastatic Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. Dr. Peters needs no introduction, but she's the professor and head of medical oncology at Lausanne University, where she also leads a translational program in collaboration with the Molecular Oncology Laboratories. On behalf of my co-author, it's my pleasure to be able to discuss with you these data looking uh, at the association between KRAS, STK11, KIP1 mutations, and outcomes in the phase three trial Poseidon. So start with my disclosure slide. Um, in Poseidon, uh, we were able to show that the combination, I will call it later on, the triplet of tremolimumab, durvalumab, and chemotherapy could demonstrate a statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvements of both progression-free survival and overall survival versus the standard of care chemotherapy alone. It's well known, biologically speaking, that CTLA4 inhibition is able to activate and expand the T cell population, leading to an increased T cell infiltration, while PDL1 is sought to inhibit and overcome. Uh, sorry, sorry PDL1 in inhibition is sought to overcome the T cell suppression, both happening uh, at the tumor site. When we give chemo, we bring an initial disease control for sure, and we might also promote tumor antigen presentations through direct killing uh, of tumor cells. While we have um, growing experience using immunotherapy, we also start to identify subgroups of patients who are characterized by a poor outcome under immunotherapy or substantially in general. Basically, STK11 mutated and KIP1 mutated tumors are associated with a strongly poor prognosis. But is there also have been shown to be what we call immunologically cold and lacking T cell infiltration. So Keras mutated subgroup is slightly more heterogeneous and generally has been shown to be responsive to anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-1 based therapy, uh, unless uh, they are found to be associated with STK11 and KIP1 mutations. So the idea was here to explore the outcome from Poseidon of this mutation, STK11, KIP1, and Keras subgroups of patients. So this is just a reminder about the Poseidon trial design. Uh, this is about naive patients with no ALK or EGFR mutations who are stratified by uh, PDL1, more or less than 50% histology and stage, who are randomized in three treatment arms, a standard up to six cycle platinum based chemotherapy and two experimental arms. One is giving uh, durvalumab with four cycle of platinum based chemotherapy using durvalumab in maintenance until progression. And the second experimental arm is giving four cycles of chemotherapy with tremilumab and durvalumab, an additional cycle of tremilumab and followed by durvalumab until progression. Primary endpoints were PFS and OS for Durvalumab plus chemo versus chemo, but alpha controlled secondary endpoints were composed by PFS and OS for Tremelimumab, Durvalumab chemotherapy versus chemotherapy. So basically, this is a long version of the slides. Huh? So don't worry, I will try to do fast because you have put me here the, the long one. Huh? So it's fine. Okay. Uh, so I will make it short. So I, I will summarize here. In, in the population of interest, which is um, uh, the non squamous for STK11, KIP1, and KRAS, uh, you can see here that the patients who provided tissue at baseline and plasma at baseline were mainly evaluable for this biomarker. 96% of them, meaning 612 patients, were evaluable or in the plasma or in the tissue or in both for these uh, alterations. And the prevalence on the right-hand side is corresponding to what we know from previous data sets, KRAS mutant in 30%, KIP1 in 6%, and STK11 in 14%. As you can see, there is some overlap, and while we observe some overlap and uh, co-occurring mutations, these subgroups become very small. So we will not be able to deliver the outcome of these co-mutated uh, tumors because of the sample size issue. So let's focus on STK11 to start. We're able to see an overall survival benefit trend for durvalumab, tremelumab, and chemotherapy in this patient with STK11 mutation, hazard ratio 0.56, and importantly at two years, an estimated survival of 32.3 months for the triple therapy as compared to 4.5 for the chemotherapy arm. 
If you look at, uh, at the PFS, it matches the overall survival data with a hazard ratio of 0.7 for tremolimab, durvalumab, chemo versus chemo. And as you can see at the milestone at one year, 34.6% of the STK11 mutated patients still being progression free while there was none in the chemo arm. But to me, the most important piece is the right hand side, the spider plot. If you look at the spider plot, in both experimental arm, you can see a higher response rate a more important depth of response and a more durable, a longer durability uh, of the response. And this is particularly true. We have the highest response rate, the more important depth of response and the longer duration when you look at the tremolimumab, durvalumab chemotherapy arm. If you look at this, you can even see that there is one complete response, which is always quite symbolic in immunotherapy. Importantly, the depth of the response was deeper and deeper after each cycle of chemotherapy in a continuous manner, with an overall response rate of 45.2% and a median duration of response of 136 for this triplet therapy in this specific subgroup. Okay, let's look at KIP1. KIP1 mutants were quite rare, and we decided to evaluate KIP1 mutation in the all biomarker evaluable population, adding there 14 patients who had non who had a, a, a squamous histology or other histologies and non squamous. You can see, be careful, it's always small sample size. We can again see in this subgroup an overall survival benefit trend with a hazard ratio of 0.43 and a landmark at two years of 35 5% overall survival for the triple therapy arm while there were no patients in the chemo arm. Down the slide, you can see the specific non squamous population we were targeting with a hazard ratio of 0.33, but again, be very careful about the small numbers. Looking at the PFS, maybe we can just look at the landmark. We have patients free from progression at one year in 30% in the triplet therapy where there were no in the chemotherapy arm. But again, the most interesting is a spider plot. When you can see that the depth of response, the um, uh, response rate and the durability of response is the best in the triple therapy of tremi, durva, and chemo with a response rate of 45.5% and a duration of response of 16.4. Last but not least, a large group of Keras mutants. We could find again an overall survival benefit trend for tremolimumab, durva, and chemo, hazard ratio 0.56, and at two years, 51.7 percent alive in the triple therapy arm, 25.6 uh, in the uh, control arm. Again, I have a look also at the durva chemo arm, uh, which is in terms of efficacy, almost sitting in between the two arms. I always quote the triple and the chemo arm. This is perfectly in line with the PFS, where you can see this hazard ratio of 0.57 for the triplet versus chemo, and patients free for progression, 40% in the triplet, 20% with the chemo, and very, very, I would say, obviously invisible depth of response, response rate, durability, with an overall response rate of 55% is favoring the triplet therapy. The median duration of response is still not met in this patient population. As a conclusion, we were able in this exploratory analysis to demonstrate this trend of overall survival in this patient population who are characterized usually by a poor outcome and a poor response to immunotherapy, this STK11, KIP1, and Keras mutant non-small cell lung cancer. We could see it as a trend for OS, also for PFS. In this subgroup of patients, the most interesting to me is to see the most frequent and deeper responses, including complete response and a sustained disease control. Just look at this response rate, 45.2 for STK11, 45.5 for KIP1, 55 for Keras. So really speaking about a kind of a salvage or maybe a rescue in the efficacy of what we do. This data suggests that it might be a strategy to adopt for these specific subgroups in the future and maybe further validate. This is to acknowledge also all the patients and the collaborators in a huge number of sites in 90 countries and of course patients, families and caregivers. And thank you for your attention.